called the twisted sister. This is going to require an ample amount of shoulder flexibility as well as hamstring and adductor flexibility. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you warm those up more than sufficiently before diving into this one. Um, I think of the twisted sister as being a great prerequisite for the broken split. So if broken split is something that is on your bucket list for the future. This is definitely one that you wanna get comfortable with to work towards the broken split. So we're gonna be going from a cupid and for now we're gonna be returning to a cupid. Down the road as you get comfortable with this, you can work on other fancy exits to it from it, but we're gonna start with the most secure, the most dependable one, the safest one getting out of it, okay? So from a cupid, um, we're gonna place the pole at the back of your foot, the Achilles, okay? So in, usually in a cupid, you know, we put like the arch of the foot on the pole. For the twisted sister, it's going to be the heel of their foot. And that's actually gonna give you more stability on the pole and make you feel more locked in, okay? So going from that cupid, however you wanna get into it, inverting up, dropping down, get that bottom leg heel to the pole. I would say on this, try to make your cupid bigger okay there are some moves where it's better for your cupid your legs to be closer together but for this one the higher up this top knee is the higher you'll be able to have this top hand and the more secure you're going to feel in this move okay so top hand is going to go as close to the knee as possible you want to have as much distance here as possible okay when you go to drop down for the second hand grab tendency often is to face the pole and reach if I do this, my shoulder here tends to run into my leg and or the pole. So I would recommend when you do go into this is think of turning away, okay? And in doing that, it helps bring my shoulder to the backside where I feel the pole and my leg to the backside and creates more space. Reason for that, it's gonna be easier for you to get this overhead grab, okay? So when we get to that first cupid, Cupid, as wide as you can go, okay? And this is not necessarily a flexibility thing. If you have shorter arms, you're not gonna need your legs to be quite as far apart. I have really long monkey arms, so I gotta get my legs a little bit farther apart to make space for those long ass arms, okay? So top hand, as close to your knee as possible. When you go into it, think of turning your chest either straight up towards the ceiling or actually away from the pole. Don't try to go for the grab right away, okay? Because in doing that, we tend to kind of get stuck, okay? So. Cupid heel or Achilles of the pole comes to the front of the pole. I'm going to lean away, arm goes overhead and reach, reach, reach initially. Once you've reached, bend your arm. You can even think of checking your temperature to your forearm. Quite often, your leg is right there. You're gonna wrap your fingers around and grab the pole, okay? So I'm not holding onto my ankle, I'm holding the pole. Once I have that, I wanna think of turning my chest away from the pole before I take this leg off, okay? To come back out, bring that leg back up and rehook to come out, okay? So yes, there definitely is a significant amount of flexibility involved with this. So yes, it is possible that flexibility is a limiting factor for you, but that being said, these little things will definitely help. Um, think of it this way, to do this grab, you're basically here, your hand is here, and you're trying to grab this way, okay? So if you're able to get into this position on the ground, you're gonna be able to get into it up there. Difference is when we're up there, gravity is actually helping us more, okay? So if this is still a bit of a challenge for you on the floor, it's definitely gonna be a challenge up in the pole, so spend some time focusing on that flexibility. Positioning wise, things to think about. Cupid, wide as you can, top hand as high as you can. When you drop down, Think either chest straight back or away from the pole. Don't try to grab right away. And then once you're in it, think about it. Pretend the pole's upside down for a second, if that's the ceiling. When that hand goes over, really think reach, elongate here. Then bend your arm. Like I said, think of either bringing it to the top of your head or your forehead, depending on your flexibility. And quite often, if you do that and then turn to look at the pole, the pole is right there, okay? Tendency is to want to grab the ankle because it's right there. It's the easiest thing to grab. If that is what you grab first, think about finger walking your fingers past until you can get your fingers around the pole. How are you going to grab the pole? Um, for me, personal preference, I just go to a cup, okay? I keep my thumb on the same side. My, my hands just go into a cup grip with the thumb pointing down. 
If you prefer to wrap your thumb and you can get it around there, go ahead. I find more so though that my ankle is actually in the way of getting my thumb and it's just gonna smush it anyway. So I would recommend the cup, but once again, if you feel more comfortable and wanna get that thumb wrapped around, 100% feel free to do so. Let's talk about that top leg. When we're ready to release that top leg, cause that's the scary part, right? That's when you're like, okay, you got me. Life is in your hand, literally. Um, when you go to release that, Think about turning your chest to the ceiling, okay? And that's actually gonna give you a torque that's actually gonna lock you in more. Think about turning your chest up towards the ceiling. And when you take the leg off the pole, um, there's a lot of pole moves like, okay, Russian split, bird of paradise, where if you take the leg off and you keep it close to the pole, it's actually sketchier. You actually wanna take, the farther away you take the leg, the more secure you are. With this, it's not the case. Like depending on how comfortable you are with this, depending on your flexibility, if you just take the leg off a little bit, it's not necessarily going to feel more comfortable out here as it does there. Um, but that being said, as I, there's kind of like a happy medium out here where I do feel like as I get a little bit farther away, I feel the torque of that bottom hand locking me in more. So it's less just on this hand that's holding. Okay, but that's personal preference. Okay, so how far out that leg goes is going to be based on your flexibility and your comfort level. Keep in mind, very similar to a Russian split though, there is eventually going to be a point where it's gonna be hard to bring it back in. So if this is your first time doing this and you have some insane flexibility, don't go all in on the first one unless you have someone there to cradle your ass out of this, okay? Take the leg out a little bit, test the waters, bring it back in and be like, okay, now I can feel how it was to bring it back in. Cause it's definitely a little bit more effort to bring the leg in than it is to let it go out, especially if you're on spinning pole. Whether to do this on spin or static. Honestly, if this is a move, I don't feel a huge difference getting into it on the spin or the static. Keep in mind, like when you're in that Cupid, the pole is going to be going faster because you're closer to the pole. And as soon as you extend out, it's going to slow down. But when you do go to bring that leg back in, it does fight centripetal force a little bit. I don't feel it's egregious, but depending on how comfortable you are with spinning pole, that could make a big difference. So if you're someone that either doesn't do a whole lot of spin pole or you're kind of feeling a little wary on this move, start with it on static. And then as you feel comfortable, take it to spin, okay? That leg, when it releases, it is not an exact vertical split, okay? It's kind of similar-ish to, in some ways, um, how a bird of paradise-ish is in that this one leg is kind of here, this other leg, see, that's not really a vertical split. Like it's sort of this sort of thing, right? So it does have a little bit of a faux split. Like if you watch as I go around, there is certain angles where you're like, oh, that split looks like, yeah. And then you see another angle and you're like, uh, it's not exactly flat. So it is a little bit of a faux-ish split, okay? Now that I've said that, now you're gonna watch for it, okay? So let's just do a little recap here. Cupid. Heel to the pole, inside hand as high as you can, other hand chest up, arm to your ear, bend, grab either your foot or the pole depending on comfort level. From there, keep thinking of turning the chest up as that leg comes away, hold as long as you feel comfortable, and then when you're ready, bring the leg back up, re-hook that knee, and then you can exit however you want to exit. All right, so. That is your twisted sister. <sighs> Spend a little stretch time. Make sure you warm up those shoulders. Play around with this. If you get comfortable with it, try putting it together in a combo with some of your other favorite moves. <laughs>